Hello everyone, hello traders. Today's webinar hosted by Admiral Markets, we will talk about the ranging market retracement and reversal. I will show you, because many traders ask me how to define a ranging a retracement or reversal, so this particular webinar may be suitable for uh, beginner traders and probably the guys who trade who trade full time and will know what I'm what I will talk about. But again, I will I will show you how to define ranging markets, how to use some indicators which can help you to define range, how you can trade those ranges. Also, although I, I don't like to trade it, but I will show you the, the methods. Also, I will show you what retracements are and how to define uh, retracement from reversal because it's it's a completely different thing the re retracement and reversal just prior to to I uh, from my start I will greet mr. Mikhail Onohov he will tell you a couple of good things and after he finishes I will take care of the webinar again so go on Mikhail you have your time and please stay with us Good evening, good evening everybody, good evening Nenad, thank you for such a lovely introduction. Good evening beginner traders, good evening professional traders, good evening Michael John, it's very nice to see you here as well. My name is Mikhail Onohov and I'm a Klailish manager for Admiral Markets, which means my job is to create the best possible trading environment for all of you. Today is Wednesday night, we have a webinar which is aimed at beginning traders, therefore as we always do on Wednesday nights, I will talk about educational programs that Admiral Markets has to offer. And today we're going to talk about a very interesting campaign called Trading Camp. Uh, we see, you see at the bottom of the screen the email for Trading Camp uh, program at Admiral Markets. It's camp at AdmiralMarkets.com. So today I wanted to speak about this program because this program is created to motivate traders. And it's always been my understanding that a person who wants to become a successful trader should approach Forex not only from an analytical or technical perspective, but should also pay attention to psychic and motivational side of trading. In one of my webinars previously, I have spoken about success. Now, it is proven scientifically that your success in trading, and in life for this matter, depends not only on your intellectual capabilities, but also on your ability to motivate yourself to do the right thing day after day, year after year. Of course, achieving such motivation is a lot easier said than done. In recent times, there have been a number of books and trainings out there that claim to help you achieve your long-term goals by motivating yourself through, say, visualization or self-affirmation. You will go to those courses where a presenter will ask you, would you please close your eyes and imagine yourself as a professional trader sitting somewhere in the Caribbean with a suitcase full of cash. The presenter might also ask you to repeat, I'm a successful trader 25 times with your eyes closed. Well, I have some bad news. None of those systems, none of those techniques will actually work. I have some good news for you as well. I will teach you a technique that actually will help you achieve your long-term aims and will help you achieve a good result when it comes to forex trading. If idea sounds good, I will continue. I'm basing my presentation on the work of Professor Richard Wiseman and his book called uh, 50, 59 Seconds. Think a little, achieve a lot. That's exactly what I've been all about. Uh, think as little as possible, achieve as much as possible. So I think just the name of this person summarizes the idea. He's quite a wise man, so let's all learn from him. Now, in his books, he gives you a bunch of very popular uh, motivational techniques. Now look at that. Out of those techniques, only three are scientifically proven to work. Now, let's play a little game. Uh, here you have, here you have six, six techniques. You can make a perfect plan, motivate by focusing on somebody you admire, tell other people about your goals, think about bad things that will happen if you fail, try to suppress negative thoughts, rely on willpower, record your progress. Now, out of those techniques, only three are proven to work. Other ones are not successful. So let's see which ones actually work. There we go. Make a perfect plan, tell the people about your goals, record your progress. Bam! 
we have our three main motivational techniques. Now, when it came to our project, our educational project called Training Camp, we decided to take all those techniques and use them together to help our rookie traders achieve a good result in Forex trading. Now, let's look at them one by one. First of all, a perfect plan. Nobody achieves something without planning. Nobody just walks around casually and then finds themselves on the top of Mount Everest. It never happens. You must have a plan. Just like people who are looking for a job, for a new job, they have a perfect plan. In the first week, I will write my CV, and then I'll send about 10 CVs every week for the next six months and see what happens. Those kind of people usually get hired. People who don't have a plan, they just aimlessly wander around, never achieve anything. Now, we decided to do a very good thing for you and create a perfect study plan. Now, when you sign up for a trading camp for three weeks, you will receive assignments every day. For five days of the week, you will receive one assignment, which is constructed, so it doesn't take more than one hour of your time. You will learn some strategies. You will learn how to use a platform. You will learn interesting facts about Forex and interesting tricks. A lot of people in our company, uh, you're not, as, not an exception, uh, are professional traders or from a professional trading background. So we ask all of them to think, what kind of advice would make a huge difference for a young rookie trader? We combine all those things in a perfect plan for you. Therefore, for three weeks, you will be able to grasp the basis of Forex. You will not be a Forex guru, but you will know what you're doing when you're trading. That's what we've done with perfect plan. Technique number two, tell the people about your goals. Now, for everybody who enters a trading camp, we will have a special Forex mentor who will help you with your trading. He will look at your results and he will tell you what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, and how can you improve yourself. Also, also, every Wednesday, people who are in trading camp will be able to chat to professional traders in a Skype conference. Not one-on-one, -on -one, better, in a group of people who are just like you, who are traders who want to become better. You will be able to make new friends, you will be able to network, you will be able to hear a lot of interesting people express their feelings and share their ideas with you. Tell other people, fantastic thing as well. And the number three is record your progress. Now, nobody tells you that you will be uh, successful in three weeks or in a week. Uh, it might have, take a little longer. I, I cannot even promise you that you, know, you will make money on your demo account as soon as, as soon as you start trading. It might take some time. But there's a huge difference between making a loss when you were actually bad or making a loss when you did everything right and got lucky. And recording your progress in a special custom-made Admiral Marcus uh, trading tracker will give you an idea whether or not you're moving into the right direction. This is a very good, uh, this is a very good technique. Uh, bodybuilders use it all the time when they're, in a, when they're pumping weights. They, they, they have a little notebook where they put the amount of repetitions and they can see whether or not they are developing themselves. You will be able to do the same thing with your trading. You will be able to analyze your trading. You will be able to see which strategies work for you and which strategies don't and make good uh, informed choices on your trading. All of this is available in trading camp. The, uh, the, uh, the program for uh, Amarabha Market started for rookie traders. Now, the trading camp is a three-week course with a demo account and then one week with a live account, so four weeks in total. With everyday assignments, with strategies developed by professional traders, performance tracking, personal coaching, and literature supplied. In order to get in the trading camp, you have to write a short essay in the Fox Ames and send it to camp at admiralmarkets.com and open a real account with a, ten, with a minimum deposit. It can be as little as $10 in some countries. It can be as uh, little as $150 in some other countries. It all depends on your region. But you only need your real account in the fourth week when you are trading on your real account. The first three weeks will be demo uh, trade, trades only. So if you want to be a member of the trading camp, send me an email. We'll start the next trading camp uh, in one and a half weeks time on Monday. So you do have some time, but don't think too long because the amount of places is limited. 
Thank you very much for your attention. I hope to see a lot of your emails very soon in my inbox. My name is Mikhail Olohov, and now and now I will pass the floor back to Nanan who will carry on with his presentation. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much, Mikhail. Excellent stuff. Now we will proceed with our webinar. So we will talk about ranging markets, retracements, and reversal. First of all, uh, prior to each webinar, as always, there is a disclaimer. By accepting the risks associated with the Forex market, you agree to proceed further with me, as always. So today's agenda is definition of ranging market, how to spot ranging market, definition of retracement, how to find a retracement, and definition of reversal and how to spot a reversal. So prior to, to my uh, the start of the webinar, I will just take a sneak peek at Forex market for traders who follow the analysis and who follow my Admiral Markets and Facebook posts, this same topic was posted also on Admiral Markets blogs. So that was the analysis of yesterday. So short into tops and we saw what happened today basically 3455. So it led to lower prices. Uh, but the thing is, yesterday we had a that is called stop hunt, and stop hunt was, hap was uh, I think it happened in Asia session, where the price spiked up 3550. It was it was clear stop hunt led to 3580, and then it dropped uh, 150 pips today. So that was that was today, and it, the the news was further. The news further gave a downward momentum strength, so that is uh, an answer for all of you who follow follow me on Forex Factory and Admiral Markets blog page. So again, ranging market. Let's see what ranging market is. A ranging market is that when prices bounce off between a specific high price and a low price. The high price acts as a major resistance level in which price cannot seem to break. The low price acts as a major support level in which price cannot seem to break as well. Market movement could be classified as a horizontal or sideways movement. So this is a ranging market with occasional few spikes, but those are usually false spikes, and those, I will show you that later on the chart also, and those spikes are pin bars, those spikes are pin bars. It is not a natural to see the price acting like this, one spike down, then close here, then one spike up, then close there, so basically this is the range and the easiest method, method of uh, price section analysis for the range is to put trend lines. I will show you how to do that and how to spot the trend lines but for all of you who doesn't uh, know forex market, uh, uh, who doesn't trade full time, you probably it's it's hard for you to, to spot that, and I will show you what what indicators you can you can use to to try to spot the ranging market because I know that many traders have a hard time finding head and shoulders, inverted head and shoulders, uh, ranges, uh, triangles, uh, bullish flags, uh, bearish wedges. I know that that is very hard for you, and also many. Traders, novice traders, ask me what are indicators I can use to spot ranging markets. I will show you that now about indicators. I will also show you how to you can find it without using any indicator. Okay, so now ranging market can be quite dangerous when traded, and this is the truth. This is the hardest part of, of forex trading, doing breakout trades in a ranging market. 
that is very, very dangerous to your account. So, in this particular example, a range-bound market is characterized by levels of higher buying pressure, known as support, and higher selling pressure, known as resistance. And those levels create a channel, and market movement is concentrated within these key levels. So that is very, very dangerous. You probably have heard many times of false breakouts. So the price rushes to break that, that big range and then falls back into the range, completely ignoring it. So that is why I have, I have uh, developed my own method of spotting ranges. I will show you. It's, it's basically how I spot ranges. Uh, and uh, I, I really don't know if the price will range or not. But using a couple of those uh, methods, we can see how range can be spotted. The worst thing in a ranging market is trend trading and breakout trading. Why? Because that the range will kill those trades completely. And you have probably witnessed many times that uh, during the breakout your price goes in your direction and, and then inevitably falls back into the range, even going below the support and then get into the range. So, a couple of those trades, bad trades, and uh, your account can be really decimated, especially if those uh, trades are leveraged. And that is very true. If, if this happens, if if uh, breakout happens like this, first to the upside, then to the range, then to the downside, then to the range again, this is the worst thing because you will lose on this trade, but and you will also lose on this trade. And now, how how can we counter that? How can we fight against that? I will show you now how I how I fight against that. The thing is, we need to see this. The first method of spotting ranging market is the trend lines. First, we need to see a trend prior prior to any any range de determination. We need to see the trend. This is the trend, and this is the breakout in trend direction. Normally, after the, the, the trend, there will be some retracement. It's normal during the trend. And then, a range market. So, how can we know that the market is ranging? First, we must spot the trend. The trend is this. Okay? And then, after we spot the trend, we need to see the retracement. We can see the retracement has started. And we see that the price hasn't respected this high. It broke through this high on this bar and created a pin bar. So we need to determine the last swing high pin bar. And pin bar is preferred because it will give the top of the range. Then, after we see this, we, we, would, we just want to see, see it like this. The price tries to break this master candle, Marubozu, white Marubozu candle. This is the range, 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 range. And after this, you, we always wait for the close. This candle has tried to break and to determine a potentially new trend. But it didn't happen as this pin bar, of course, this is a, a reverse pin bar in contrary to this one gave a swing low. So now we have a last swing high pin bar and we have a last swing low pin bar. All in between we mark with, with red lines. All in between those lines is called a range. So look at this. This is also this is preferred to, to, to spot in ranging markets. Chargers show smaller candlesticks. These candlesticks have no volume. 
And when I refer to volume in Forex market, I refer to tick volume. We can see that this is a very low volume here, very, very small, a very low number of buyers and sellers. And in this range, there is also another confirmation that this is the range. So now when we have spotted the range, now we want to see the first breakout of the range. Again, the lower part has been retested. See this candle, and this candle has tried to retest it, but then it failed. It closed again in the range. This candle now is going higher, higher, spikes the market. Here in this point, we can see that the range has been broken. This candle tries to get back into the range, but you can see the wick of that. this candle. The wick is in the range but the close has been outside this level. So this is the breakout. And this can be treated as breakout pullback continuation trade. So above this level, we see a new trend. And this is one hour time frame. So this is all around. You can see there some 50, 60 pips to the upside. Then it goes to retracement and then goes again 50, 60 pips to the upside. So this is the first method, how to determine a range, how to spot a range in market. So first of all, we need to see the trend. Then we need to see the retracement. And then we need to see consolidation pin bar to the upside or to the downside, whatever comes first. But I prefer it to see first in the direction of the trend, it's to the upside. Then we see another drop, 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 and we see another pin bar to the downside now. And then when we, when we spot those two pin bars, we mark the levels. We put the line here and we put the line there. So that is the range. How are we going to trade the range? We will trade the breakout of those range by breakout pullback continuation pattern, whichever comes first, OK? The second method of spotting the range market is also, yeah, I, I, I forgot about this slide. Ranges are traded. Sell at the tops, buy at bottoms. So in this particular trade, how will we trade it for those who want to trade the range? We have determined this point here and this point here. Let's see the price action after. We can, OK, the first thing is we can buy here at the bottom of the range. And we can even try to sell it there. Uh, both of those trades would be successful. The first trade could have been uh, that is around 300 pips and this trade could have been good for some 40 pips because the first test of this upper range has been declined. So the price fell some 50 pips to the downside. So sell at the top, buy at bottoms. That is the range. The range is also uh, when the price makes bull flags, consolidation triangles. What is the bull flag? This is the bull flag. How you know that the flag that the flag is bull flag? First, we have a pole. The pole in this example is Marobozu candle. Okay, for all of you who who know what Marobozu, who don't know what Marobozu is. Marubozu is a bully candle. It can be white. It means that uh, that candlestick is very bullish and that the market is preparing possibly for a bull run but is usually characterized by retrac retracement afterwards because a lot of things have accompanied, have accompanied this, this Marabozu candle that can be news, that can be stop hunt, that can be a big tick volume of buyers. So anything 
can be accounted to Marubozu candles. But in this example, Marubozu candle served basically as a pole of this flag. So, what happened is we have marked the range and we can see that the range is being respected. I usually never trade in those patterns, but this is how you can do it if you dare to, to trade it. You need to see the, the, the trend line, so the trend line has been spotted in this point, so sell here, buy there. After that, you can sell here. The profit uh, would have been good for some number of pips up, up to this candle. And then, breakout usually happens. This is bull flag. We wait for the breakout, pullback, continuation trade. And those naked traders know what I'm talking about. This is breakout, this is pullback, and up this point there is a continuation trade. Usually well, what happens is the, the continuation is as big as the half of the pole. And sometimes even uh, the flag pattern can be, a breakout can be exploited to the full extent of the, of the, of the pole. Also, ranging markets are consolidation triangles. You see the consolidation triangle, you put the line in here, rate to the downside, line there, rate to the upside, and what happens is we have a low here, we have a high there, a low here, a high there, low here, and the next guy has been a little bit rejected, but then after that the market, of course, the market have broken out of the range and gave us a breakout pullback continuation trade, okay? So, those are examples of, of uh, real-time charts also. I have, I have picked, I think, Aussie for, for this kind of, for this kind of uh, uh, showing off. So, uh, what should we do if we spot the range? We either wait for a breakout pullback continuation or if you're very sure in your methods, then you can trade sell, sell here, buy there, and so on, okay? But I rarely, I just don't like to see consolidation triangles. I don't like to trade it. I, it's okay to see, but I don't like to trade. That is the time when I usually scalp. I don't have clear targets in mind. I just go for 10, 15 pips because of consolidation. And also, one of those patterns you can trade is a rectangle. So that is also ranging market. Buy at bottom, sell at top. Buy at bottom, sell at top. Buy at bottom, sell at top. And the worst enemy of ranging market is breakout. If breakout happens, we will lose a trade, no matter what side the breakout happens. It can be both sides. But because now we know how to spot the ranging markets, we will use pin bars to our advantage. So we won't go to false breakouts, we want to see clear breakouts, such as this example. Breakout pullback continuation. The other matter for those traders who are very unsure in charting methods and who, who just don't know to spot uh, ranges by charting methods, we use ADX and Bollinger Bands. Now I will show you example how ADX and Bollinger Bands work together. And I know that many traders just cannot spot it very, very accurately. And this is of course the issue to all of those traders who prefer to use indicators in trading. Well, sometimes it's okay, and I, do, I just don't think generally if you use indicators as I explained how you should use it, one momentum indicator, one leaning indicator, entry indicator, then you can do a pretty good stuff because indicators follow price action. And in this example, you can also use indicators to your advantage. We have ADX and we have Bollinger Bands. If ADX is lower than 25, 
on 14 period ADX, we have a ranging market. If Bollinger Bands at the default setting are squeezed, we can see a ranging market. So you need to add ADX indicator to your charts. It's for 14 period, for, so 14 days. And you add 25 level to the indicator setting. If, if ADX is below the 25, then we can see that there is a range. Is that the truth? Yes, it is because I have marked the range here. It's below the 25. And also we can see that this line middle Bollinger Band line is flat. You can see how flat it is. Also up, upper and lower Bollinger Bands are squeezed and they are going sideways. So this is the sign of ranging market. ADX is below 25. Uh, Bollinger Bands are squeezed and the middle line is going sideways. Is this true? that this is a ranging market. Yes, it is because we have Bollinger Band is dynamic indicator for support and resistance. So we can see, I have marked also with red lines. Triple top, then bottom, then we have a range. Almost to the top, to the bottom, and then up in the, in the Bollinger Bands, then again, again, until the price breaks out of this range and is also characterized by middle Bollinger Band line going down. And what happened to ADX? ADX also went above 25, so that is indication that the trend is starting, has already started, and that the range period is over. So this is how I also determine ranges. Very simple method, but very effective. Draw the lines, identify middle Bollinger Band, put ADX indicator on 25, if below, if, if it's below 25, you can see that the market is ranging. Now, I don't need particularly ADX because I can spot it by my naked eye. I, I can spot it immediately. When I see it, that is called experience, but of course, this is the beginner stage of learning how to spot ranges, how to trade ranges, trends, retracements. So, this is the example. Uh, use ADX to your advantage. It's good indicator for spotting ranges below 25, middle Bollinger Band line going sideways, and those Bollinger Band lines also going sideways. You see how Bollinger, this is the trend, this is the range, this is the trend, this is the range. This is the trend, and this is the range. This is all the trend. You see the middle Bollinger Band line. So that is also one of those things, how you spot ranging markets. You see here, this is also range. So you won't be fooled into entering a short trade. You see how this hill here is also a sign of the range. We, we don't want to see Bollinger Band going like this, middle, middle Bollinger Band. We want to see it going down or going up. If we see that the middle Bollinger Band is going uh, in a hill direction, this is the hill, see? Then we can know that this is also ranging market. Look at this, this is very flat. And look at how ADS has spotted ranging market. So we want to see it going down. This is also the range, this is also the range, and this is breakout of the range. You can see also ADX indicator has signaled the breakout, retest, breakout. Okay? So, ADX and Bollinger Bands. Now, let's see what retracement is. A retracement, by definition, is a temporary reversal in the trend direction. Oh, sorry. Well, it's a trend. It's a counter-trend direction, but the main direction is trend. 
So it's a temporary reversal in the direction of market price that goes against the prevailing trend. It's also known as a correction. And it always goes uh, versus prevailing trend. So if you know how I define the trend, I will remember you. Uptrend is a series of higher highs and lower highs. Zigzag motion of trust pullback. Trust pullback. Trust pullback. Trust pullback. Trust pullback and until this trend line is broken we have a trend. Okay? So this is that is the trend. A series of higher highs and higher lows, trust and pullbacks in a desert desired direction. So it can be uptrend or it can be downtrend. Retracement is always found within a trend. So retracements are short term changes within a longer term trend while reversals indicate the end of a large trend and the be beginning of a new trend. When a retracement first begins, it is difficult to tell whether it is a retracement or a reversal. We use technical analysts to we we the technical analysts try to distinguish between the two using various technical tools. So it's very hard to know whether this retracement will become a reversal. So that is the hardest the hardest thing in forex market. To, to know whether the, the, the normal retracement normal retracement will become a reversal. We just don't know that, okay? So we need to use some tools to define it. This is the showcase of retracement. Retracement is always found in the trend. Now take a look at this picture. And if you take, if you, if you are looking carefully, you will see that I have marked trend with Fibonacci retracements. So this is the retracement. We have a range, okay? This is the range, you see? And what happens is, the price makes lower low, but then Again, the price has touched the top and it's made a higher high or slightly above this guy. What happens is the price retraces to 38.2 and it tries to go up. Then we have another push to downside to 61.8, but we still go up. In this point, I can connect and ray a trend line. This is the first point, this is the second point of the trend line. Rest is arrayed out. So, in this point, the, uh, this currency pair has started to go upwards, and then after this point, we have a reversal. The reversal perfectly hit trend line in confluence with 50 point FIB, and, re and it went higher. Then, after another leg to the upside, we have 31.8 touched and then higher, then again. So, retracement is always found in the trend. In this case, this is uptrend. And how we trade trends by Fibonacci, you know that already. 38.2, those are the most important levels. We try to find a confluence. In this case, this was the confluence of trend line and 50 level support. Now, take a look at this picture. Using FIB retracement tool, we can pick the level for possible continuation of the trend on a particular time frame. So, on this time frame, we have a trend. That doesn't mean that on 15 minutes we have a trend. So in this time frame we have a trend and using FIB retracement on this time frame 
we can find entries. Most commonly used levels are 50, 61.8, and 76.4. 88.6 is the deepest retracement, and usually the price will turn around that level. Sometimes, if the trend isn't, or the trend is very strong, it depends. Sometimes, even if the trend is very strong, the price will touch 88.6 and proceed upward. But in this case, we had a trend line which kept the price for dropping further than 50 retracement. If it drops here, we have a trend line that can be usually signal for a reversal. So, we want to see if we have a confluence, we want to see it at least in the confluence with the trend line. In this case, 61.8 to eventually false break, false breakout of 76.4 would be great. Why? Because if the candle comes here and proceeds to 76.4 and then closes above this line, making a hammer reversal pattern, we would have seen triple confluence of 76.4 touch, trend line, and bullish reversal candlestick. It would be the best scenario. But this 38.2 is also prone to be a good spot for trend trade. Spinning top candle, and then we have a sort of breakout to the upside candle. And at this point, breakout, pullback, continuation. But for trend trades, we have seen 38.2 touch. Okay? So, mark these levels, 56.1.8, 76.4, and 88.6. Uh, some of those levels are not included in MetaTrader 4 by default, so you need to enter it manually. Ah, there is a question. We have not seen the 88 trend in the second situation. Why is that so? Because this trend has been very, very strong. This is very, very strong trend. And if you spot this candle, Barbosu candle, this candle has broken of 88.6 in this case and proceed to the upside. And in this case, if it, if it, if it has fallen, if it had fallen to 88.6, we would have called it probably a reversal because many traders use trend lines and Fibonacci retracements. And if in this case, this this is the swing low, this is swing high, and if some of those candles went there, we would see the break of this trend line. And also, this is very strong trend. You see how the price broke above this level in a big, big momentum. So this is strong trend. And sometimes, if you remember my increased webinar, sometimes when trend is strong, we won't see further than 38.2. And this trend has indeed been very strong. Okay, I think that you understand now why we didn't see 88.6 in this situation. It would be very hard to call it a trend retracement because we have a trend line. If the price went down, we would have probably call it a potential retracement. So who would have belonged here? I don't think so. So this is basically a confluence of 38.2 and, and basically a Marubozu candle, which broke out violently. And now, again, those are most commonly used levels, 56.1.8, 76.4. Sometimes that, that will be, like in this case, 38.2, and sometimes it can be 88.6.
and usually we call it deep retracement. What are reversals now? Reversals are completely U-turns of the particular market. Reversals can happen in any market. It doesn't matter if you trade gold, if you trade silver, if you trade indices, stocks, or forex pairs. It, they happen all the time. Why do they happen? Because of profit taking and because of fundamental shifts, fundamental news. What happened to Euro, I already showed you. Today, the, it has broken this channel and we call it a reversal. 3485 has been retested. I saw that and it went down to test 3450. In this case, I also, this is the example, only the close below 3485 will test 34 because this is the confluence of those levels in conjunction with uh, L3 and equidistant lower boundary. Okay? So this is also can be a trend line and reversal. It's maybe easier for you now to, to see. I will use another example. Uh, reversals mark the difference between retracements and uh, the, the mark usually the beginning of new trend. And the uh, difference between retracement and reversal is that reversal completely turn the price in an opposite direction. Reversals are hard to spot immediately and they can be seen as head and shoulder, trendline breaks, uh, breaks and various reversal pattern and candlesticks. Now, the thing is that we don't know whether retracement will happen or reversal will happen. Let's take, let's uh, take a look on this again. So this is Aussie 4 hour time frame. This is the retracement and I have drawn a trend line. This is the same chart, but now I have extended it into a, let's see, a better view for you to spot a, a reversal after retracement. First of all, we could have seen that we have a trend, trend line rate up, then we have trend 38.2, then 50 in conjunction with trend line, then 38.2. This is range, breakout of the range, and the top. And then this candle has started violently, probably uh, because of some news. It started to drop violently to the downside, closed into this trend line, above the trend line. So we can say maybe this is potential to go long. But what happened is, the, this candle broke through the trend line, went down, ranged, retested the trend line and proceeded further. So when this candle, when this trend line was broken, this candle, Mlek Barbozu candle, gave us the first cue that the trend will be shifted. Also, after the trend line break, we had a retest and head and shoulders pattern has formed. So first we had a retracement until this black candle broke to trend line, retested it, gone down, and then range, and you see this candle and those candle, this is breakout candle, this is pullback candle, retested that trend line, and continuation is here, below this breakout point. And now Another trend line after that has been formed and there is upper trend line which defines a downtrend. This is the first touch. We can see that this is maybe the, the second touch but also we have another touch here, retest, retest and down. Again, this is again a slight reversal of the trend. At least it was valid for a couple of days before the price start to go down again. So, these are retracements within the trend and when trend line, that is why we call it trend line. 
it defines the trend. That is why we call it trend line. So after the trend line break, we had breakout, pullback, continuation. So this was the, the crucial point when the trend line has been broken. This has marked the beginning of a new trend. And those fundamental news usually shift the trend. The trend won't be shifted by, by, by itself. Usually we will see retracements or deep retracements until some news kick in, important news, and shift the trend. So always watch. That is why I say always watch for those important news because they can mark a beginning of the new trend. And if you couple that with a good technical analysis, you will have great possibilities to be profitable in Forex market. So this presume I think that this was R RBA, Reserve Bank of Australia, news time, or maybe not, I don't know, if the, if the time is around 12 o'clock, maybe that was a dollar strength, but it doesn't matter. Dollar strength leads to Aus Australian dollar weakness. So let's say, and I'm sure that this, this was some news, this news gave initial momentum, to break the strand line and now our, we technical analysts can see that this was indeed the change of the trend. First the breakout of longer term trend line, mid term trend line, intra week, two, three weeks it was lasted and then it broke to downside, head and shoulders, retest and continuation. Some traders also trade this pattern breakout pullback continuation here at the point of retest of this trend line. So shorting it at the very top of the potential head and shoulder and trend line. So guys, I have showed you today how to spot ranging market retracements and reversals. Now you know what is ranging market retracement and reversal, how to define it correctly, how to trade it. For all of you who don't know about it, this webinar is being recorded. It will be uploaded on Admiral Markets webinars, so you can watch it again. If you have any further questions, now is the time to ask me. If you don't have any questions, I will show the slides again and we can conclude the webinar. Ranging market, pin bar, pin bar, mark the range and trade the breakout or trade the top and the bottom. ADX lower than 25 marks the ranging market. Bollinger Bands middle line, if it's flat, it marks ranging market until it shifts in a direction of the trend to the downside in these examples. A retracement is a correction, temporary reversal in the direction of market price that, that goes against the prevailing trend. This is retracement. Up trust correction to 38.2 and then to 61.8, 50, and to 38.2. When are we going to trade the Aussie downtrend? After the break of the horizontal line after the test? Yes, in this example, if you see another, because history will show itself again. The history will we always shows again. So. It doesn't matter whether we will trade Aussie or other pair. This is the pattern that you use for trading reversals. Uptrend, in this case, break out of the trend line, pull back to retest the trend line, and at this point it was continuation. You can, this is your pick, you can trade it at the very retest of the trend line, or you can trade it as a continuation below the breakout point. It's up to you. Some traders prefer to, to short it at the retest 
and some traders prefer to wait for a, let's say, confirmation, breakout, uh, two or three pips below the breakout point, breakout candle. If you trade it here, your uh, normally your risk to reward will be better than if you place your order here. Breakout pullback continuation pair is this. Breakout of the trend line, retest or pull back to the trend line, and breakout of, and and then the break of breakout point. If this was the breakout point, and the mark, we mark it with the red level, or level, and then we go when the, the to downside when this level breaks. Okay. And then, usually after that, new trend line is formed now to the downside. You are welcome. So guys, pay attention to these patterns. Now you know how to spot FIBO retracements, how to use it, how to make trend trains in conjunction with trend line. I, I'm very glad that you like it. Low and others, there will be many more webinars where I will post setups and how to trade particular patterns. Now you know this is the truth. You know how to trade it, how to spot it. I know that it's very, it's peculiar. It's not very easy, but when you see a trend line in the direction of the trend, and let's say this is downtrend, you see this candlestick went, uh, went above then this was basically a retest because it, it's unnatural to retest it here. So the breakout candle was retest. Sometimes you will see also this pattern breakout. Where is the pullback? At this level. Because that was the breakout candle. So always mark the breakout candle. Mark with a, a line, horizontal line. So this is the, the breakout level and the retest will come here, not there, because it's unnatural. So there will be a retest of the breakout candle. And you see now in this case, this was the high, so we would have made only 10 or 15 pips if we went with classical breakout pullback continuation. And if we went here at the retest of the this level, breakout level of the trend line, we would have made a lot more pips. But sometimes it's, it's your pick what you should trade. Whether you will trade BPC or you will trade just a simple retest. So anywhere, guys, nice, nice talking to you. Thank you very much. I like Admiral Markets on Facebook page. Follow our analysis. I will be here with you again in two days, me and Chris. We'll have a new topic. Thank you very much and uh, many green pips as always. Take care, don't over, -lever over leverage yourself. Bye bye aid, and talk to you very soon. The